Can I get this fella? Let's go. What happened? There were two guys. They beat us up. Where are they? Just run away. Uh. <laughs> Hello, police? This is Shah, a Bangladeshi national. He was first found battered and unconscious. Medical examination at the hospital confirmed that he suffered multiple injuries which include multiple facial bone fractures and injuries to the eyes. When he regained consciousness, he reported that his handphone and wallet were missing. This is Raja, an Indian national. He too suffered multiple injuries which include a fractured nose and eye socket, abrasion over the right forearm and bilateral knees. He wasn't unconscious when he was found. He claimed that two men attacked him. He reported that his wallet and handphone were missing. Any weapon found? According to Shah, his attackers weren't armed, but judging by the extent of the injuries, the attacks were brutal, likely to be wrought by a seasoned street fighter. Yes, Faisal, you got something? Yeah. I've checked with other police division. Apparently, since early last month, there have been similar cases reported, where male victims were ambushed, brutally attacked and robbed in the early hours of the morning. He sustained cuts on his right forehead, injuries to his shoulder, face and hip. Was the victim able to identify his attackers? He said they were young, big size, tan complexion and looked local. One of them was wearing spectacles. Did he give a description of their faces? Unfortunately, no. What was reported missing from the victim? His handphone, sling bag, his wallet which contained $100 cash, NRIC and ATM cards. NRIC and ATM cards. This culprit could use those for illegal transactions. Yes, we shall monitor those cards closely in case someone tries to use them. Tell us more about the other incidents. According to the victim, in this incident, one of the attackers spoke with local asset. And just two days ago, another similar case reported at Yishun Ring Road. The attack was captured on CCTV. They look young and well-built probably in their early 20s. And one of them is very spectacles. Just like how our earlier victims described them. Looks like all the crimes are committed by the same two men. They could be in our database for past offences. I will go through the police database. Yes, and see what all those who are wearing spectacles. Yes, sir. And rule out those who were serving time in prison and overseas when the reported offences were committed. Sure. In all the cases, the victim's handphone was taken. Should we check out all the second-hand handphone shops? Yes, go to those where stolen handphones had been previously found. Hi. I'm Investigation Officer Norishman from Central Police Division. We're investigating a series of handphone theft. How can I help? Can we have a look at your sales log? Sure. Hi, I'm Investigation Officer from Central Police Division. Hello, Prashant speaking. Prashant, we have just received a report of robbery we heard. At Robertson Key. Any eyewitnesses? Only the complainant. He reported seeing two young men running away and 
getting into a taxi. Was the victim able to identify those men? He reported they were tall and wore bermudas. He claimed that he couldn't see their faces as it was dark and everything happened so fast. What about the taxi? He reported seeing a taxi but was unable to identify his company. I have contacted all the taxi companies in Singapore. They are checking with their drivers. One of the victims just reported receiving a bill for a phone line that he claimed he didn't subscribe. Who is this victim? His name is Halim. He was reportedly beaten up and robbed along Angulia Park. His handphone and his wallet were taken. And so was his IC? Yes. And someone had used it to sign for a new line. Faisal, inform the telco and continue to monitor the phone line. Yes, sir. Really? Follow up with taxi companies. Right. Kawi, you have details of the shop where the fraudulent subscription was made? Yes, I have. Good. Let's pay them a visit. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Officer Prashant, this is Officer Kawi from Central Police Division. Oh, can I help you? Um, we suspect someone may have used this subscriber's identity to sign for a new plan. With this shop? That's correct. We'd like to verify the subscription. Let me check. Thank you. Here it is. Halim Mohammed, 16 of May. He subscribed to a new plan that comes with a free new iPhone. Ma'am, can we have a look at your CCTV recordings? Sure. That's him. Prashant, I think there were two others. Look like they were waiting for their friends. Maybe. Looks like we'll be looking at three suspects, not two. Hello? Yes? You've located the iPhone? Where? Okay, great, thank you. That's intelligence. They've located the iPhone. Hello. Hello. I'm Officer Sean. This is Officer Faisal. We're from Central Police. We're investigating a series of handphone thefts. Can we have a look at your sales log? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, just come with me. Thank you very much. Have a seat here. Thank you. We're looking for the name Halim Muhammad. Yes, there's someone who sold me a new iPhone by the name of Halim Muhammad. Is this it? Yes. Is the phone still in this shop? No, I saw it this morning. So to Some tourists. Can you describe the person who sold you the phone? Not so sure. What do you mean? Well, there wasn't just one of them, but there were three persons that came to sell me the phone. Is the CCTV recording? Yes, it is. I installed it just in case some joker tried to rob me. Can we have a look at your CCTV recordings? Sure. We have the faces, but not the identities. I propose we match those faces with our database. As we have a large number of shortlisted profiles, I say we divide the work and expedite the process. Prashant, I found something. His name is Halazar Bimawa Yusuf. What's his background? In year 2009, he was charged and convicted with five counts of robbery. We have identified one subject, his name Al Azhar bin Muhammad Yusuf, age 20. We believe that he's working with another subject to commit the aggravated robberies. The other subject has not been identified. It's critical that we move in quickly and make arrests before he and his accomplice take another victim. Stay alert and continue to survey the surroundings. Bashad, look, the team! Suspect spotted heading towards block 203. Stand by over. Roger. Roger. Roger.
went into the service apartment at Recreation Lane. Let me go! Let me go! Hey! Let me go! Alaza, we're placing you under arrest for robbery with hurt. Take him away. Where are the handphones and the wallets? First drawer. Only this? Yes. So, you admitted that there are three of you. Who are the other two? al -Azhar, you and another man are suspected of aggravated robbery. That's very serious. But they didn't die. Why? Did you intend to kill anyone? Well, if you did, then you and your friend are in serious trouble. No. We didn't intend to kill anyone. So? Why did you beat them up? We beat them up so it'll be easier for us to rob them. <laughs> we also messed up their faces so they can't recognize us. Once again, who was with you? Alaza, do you want to take the blame for everything? Syed. Syed was with me. Where does he live? He... he lives in Marsling. Saya SLU Fazal daripada Central Police. Saya ada di rumah. Ada. Cini siapa? Mak dia. Pak, siapa tu? Polis cari kau. Kenapa kenapa ini? Kenapa? 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 Where are the handphones and wallets? Ah, on top of the fridge. And behind the cooker. Is that all? Yes, sir. Syed Mohammad Nazir, you're under arrest for robbery with hurt. Me and Alaza will take a bus or train to some place. After that, we find and choose people to strike. What do you look for when choosing your victims? We look for men to beat up. After that, strike them. Besides you and Alazar, there was a third person seen selling the victim's handphones. Who is he? He's Mune. Do you know where he lives? He lives at Woolen Circle. Mama Mune? Yes. Police. Mohamed Munir, you're under arrest for cheating by personation. Where were you when al Azhar and Syed committed the robberies? I was home somewhere. I wasn't with them. But you had met them? And they had shown you what they had taken? Yes. We can make money from this. We have taken the IC to sign up for a new plan. That way, we can get a brand new phone, free of charge. How are you going to share the new phone? We'll sell it, right? Yes, I know shops that we can sell the phone. And after I sell the phone, we'll share the remaining proceeds. Ken? Okay. Yeah, okay. I would like to sign for a new plan. Oh, do you have IC? El Aza bin Muhammad Yusuf was found guilty of robbery with hurt. He was sentenced to seven years and two months imprisonment and 24 strokes of the cane. Syed Mohammad Nasir bin Syed Mohammad was found guilty of robbery with hurt and drug consumption. He was sentenced to eight years and six months imprisonment and 24 strokes of the cane. Though Muhammad Munir bin Hajar Moidin was not involved in the brutal assaults, he was, however, found guilty of cheating. He was sentenced to six months imprisonment. Over a period of one and a half months, 
Al Aza and Syed travelled to five different parts of the island to rob their victims, thinking they could escape police's detection. They beat up their victims with bare fists before taking away valuables such as handphones and wallets. The attacks were designed to be brutal so that the victims would not be able to immediately make a police report. This way, Al Aza and Syed ensured that their identities remained unknown. Led by Senior Investigation Officer Prashan, investigation officers from the Central Police Division analysed similar robberies at Tangan, Bado and Amokyo Police Divisions. A key breakthrough came when one of the victims received a phone bill for a number which he never subscribed to. Information from this bill led the officers to a phone shop where one of the stolen phones was sold. Through meticulous investigations, SIO Prashan and his team identified the robbers and their accomplices. Although Munir was not complicit in the brutal assault, he was convicted for cheating as he had used the victim's NRIC to obtain new handphones. He subsequently sold the phones and split the proceeds with the two robbers. This case demonstrated the excellent coordination between officers of the various police divisions. Armed with a strong sense of justice, SIO Prashan and his team worked round the clock to identify the robbers and put them behind bars. Compared to 2011, 2012 saw a significant drop of 11.7% in violent property crimes and 4% in crimes against persons. Despite this, the police is determined to step up enforcement efforts against such crime. We need your help to be vigilant and to take the necessary precautions against crime. Avoid walking through dimly lit, quiet or secluded places. Carry a shrill alarm and sound it if you require urgent assistance. When returning home at night, arrange for a family member to escort you home. If you suspect that you are being followed, proceed to a crowded area quickly. Very importantly, if you are robbed, do not struggle. Call the police as soon as you can. The following information will help investigators to identify the culprits. Appearance, height, distinctive features such as tattoos, scars or moles, attire, mode and directions of escape. Coming up next, community policing system or COPS in action. Community policing is a frontline policing system that started in 1983 with the setup of the Neighbourhood Police Post or the MPP. It was adapted from the Japanese Koban system which sought to establish a closer relationship between the police and the public. Over the years, with the changing landscape and higher public expectations, the MPP system was redesigned as a one-stop policing centre system in 1997. Known commonly as the Neighbourhood Police Centres, or MPCs, they were set up to provide a full range of policing services and an integrated service process for the public. Community liaison work was also expanded to include community partners in community safety and security programmes. Today, the operating environment for the police has changed. The police has to ensure that crime fighting is more responsive and better tailored to local needs. The rapport with the community has to be further strengthened. Cops or the community policing system was rolled out in Tampanese and Bukit Merah East MPCs in May last year. This marked the beginning of community policing in the 21st century. Under Cops, MPCs will be strengthened with additional resources to tackle local crime concerns and enhance community engagement. To date, with the latest launch of Cops at Pongo MPC, we have a total of eight MPCs that have rolled out Cops. I think given the opportunity, it would be very good to have uh, police uh, moving in the estate and because it gives the opportunity for the people living in the estate to get to know the police and the police to get to know us. And in the process, it builds relationship. And I think relationship is important because that will instill confidence in the people and with good relationship, uh, one complements the other. And that will, I think, help to minimise any uh, potential crime in the estate. A group of officers are deployed to patrol the streets on foot and bicycles. Going on constant rounds, it is part of their duty to familiarise themselves with the terrain and layout of the area. Besides looking out for criminal activities, they also seek to build closer ties with the community and reliable sources for information on crime. Morning, ma'am. Hi, how are you? Are you all waiting for someone? We just sit here. Oh, okay, see you around. Take care. Okay, okay bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, stop! Police cameras, or pole cam, are progressively being installed at 10,000 HDB blocks and multi-storey car parks. 
with installation targeted to be completed by 2016. A dedicated outfit known as the Crime Strike Force, or CSF, is also set up to deal with localised crimes. The POCAM footage and the CSF's terrain knowledge will enable police to fight crime more effectively. When a crime is reported, the officers from the Crime Strike Force and the Community Policing Unit will move into action. Yes, I thought I saw him loitering around. He looks suspicious. Ma'am, are you sure? Oh uh, yes, he's wearing the same clothes. Where do you see him? Oh, um, it's actually over the area. Thank you. Bravo, suspect spotted at Block 163 Alpha. Go sit there, over. Roger. I know Shokai here. Through deeper understanding of the terrain, routines, people in the neighbourhood and support from the local community, cops is a force to be reckoned with in your neighbourhood. We've come to the end of another episode of Crime Watch. If you have any feedback, feel free to drop us an email. Until next month, I'm DSP Julius Lim, signing off. <laughs>